I have three parts here shown in purple and I want to machine them out of a single block of aluminum represented by the green rectangles and I'm going to use a 2D high speed toolpath so from the drop down menu I'm going to select toolpaths 2D high speed and for this video I want to focus on dynamic mill so I'll select dynamic mill the chaining window is a little different than we're used to I want to tell the tool as well to stay outside of the regions I select for machining so first I'm going to tell I want to select machining chains. I'm going to activate construction plane chaining and I'm going to do partial chaining in this case because where the red rectangles are are clamps that I would prefer not to hit. So I have construction plane chaining on, partial chaining. I'm going to select my first entity here and I'm going to tell it it ends here. Then I'll tell it to end the chain and I want all the geometry chained in the same direction so on this part over here I'll start here it's hard to grab the line at this end point so I'm just going to reverse it I'll end here and again I'll tell to end the chain and for my third part I'll chain this I've chained all three entities so I'm going to say OK I come back here now they're all open chains so I need to tell it what to do with the open chain here and I'm going to tell it just to extend tangent out to the stock. I need to tell it what to avoid. I do not want to cut inside the purple part. So for avoidance region I'm going to click here back to construction plane chaining and this time I'm just going to chain the top of each part. Now the tool will avoid anything contained within these boundaries, so I'll accept that selection. I don't have any air regions. That would be a large area where there's nothing to machine. So in this part I don't have that worry. I'm going to add a containment region. And for that I'm going to select this red rectangular shape and say OK. And if I wanted to I could select a chain to enter on, but I'm happy with that. So I'll say OK. And now I'm in the two speed dynamic mill toolpath and at this point I can change like anything. I can also change any of my geometry or selections over here on the right side of the toolpath type. So next I want to choose a tool so I'll use this half inch flat mill I used for my previous operation. I'll set up the speeds and feeds. This is a roughing toolpath in aluminum. I'm going to give it a high plunge rate and an appropriate comment. Next I'll go to the cut parameters. I'll choose whether I want climbing or conventional milling. I'm going to compensate to the tip of the tool. I'm going to set up an approach distance and I can choose where I want the tool to approach the part from. I'll stick with the bottom left and I'll tell it the approach distance is one inch. So the tool hopefully will start out here and approach the solid stock. So for the first pass offset I'm also gonna offset the tool by its radius. I can reduce the feed if I wish seeing how it will engage more material on the first pass. I'll set the step over here Typically we're going full depth of our tool, in my case it's 3 8 deep. And the step over is 20 to 25 percent in these high speed tool paths. I can tell it the minimum tool path radius and our gap size. When should the tool lift up when it's not cutting or when to avoid parts or should it just keep feeding? So the default, if it's within the gap, is 100% or less than the tool diameter, then just keep feeding. If it's not, go to wrap it. The micro lift is a really nice feature. It stops the tool from rubbing when it's not cutting. So anytime the tool's doing these loops, when it's cutting, it'll be at the depth, but when it gets through the material, it's about to do a high speed loop back and engage the material again, it'll lift, in this case, 10 thou. And the tool doesn't rub on the bottom, and it'll give us a much better tool life. I need to tell it what to do when the gap size is more than 100%. So do I want to apply that when avoiding the boundary? Never. Or with any of these combinations? And I'll just tell it when avoiding a boundary. 
So I want to optimize the cut order based on the material it has to cut. And I'm going to leave 50 thou on the walls and 50 thou on the floors. I'm not going to turn on depth cuts. I want the tool to do a full depth of cut, which is typical of a high speed toolpath. For the entry motion, I can change geometry. I wish it to follow on entry. So I'm going to select this. Brings me to my chaining manager window. I'm going to right click, tell to add a chain. I'll go construction plane chaining and single. And I'll tell it to follow this entity here. Or if I want, I can unselect that. And I can tell it to follow the entire outside profile. I'll accept that selection. Again, I'll accept this. I'm back here in my window. If I don't want that, I can unselect it. And now the entry method, I can choose to helix in or any one of these. So I've chosen to follow the profile as it enters. It's going to start 100 thou above the part and I've set the plunge angle to 3 degrees. The rest of this I'll just accept the defaults. Since this is my first toolpath for these parts, there is no rest material. I don't want it to break through. And I'll go to the linking parameters. It's recognized the depth of my stock. The top of stock is zero, however. It's looking at a clamp that I have created in my stock. I want it to feed from 100 thou above and retract to a quarter inch above. And once again, where these rectangles are, I have clamps. So when I verify it, I want to watch for the clamps getting cut. And if they do get cut, I'll turn on the clearance or I'll make the retract above the top of those clamps. I'll turn the coolant on. I'll accept this selection and have a look at my toolpath. Okay. It's warning me when I said to enter here, it's going to ignore that. That's fine. It'll figure out its own. The picture of the spool of thread here means it's calculating the toolpath. And now we see the toolpath and we see some problems. It's going through my avoidance region, so I'm going to need to fix that. So I'll go back into parameters, back to the first page, and I'll look at my avoidance regions. regions. Okay. And that's my fault. I forgot to chain these as well as top of the part. So I'm going to right click in the window. I'm going to add some chains, turn on construction plane geometry, and I'll color mask for my red color. Accept these selections, and I'll chain these three rectangles as avoidance regions as well. Go OK. Once again, I'll say OK. I have to regenerate the toolpath, and when I do, you'll notice I get the same warning. Right here, it's working. I could continue working on other toolpaths or wait for it, and now my avoidance regions are avoided. So I want to verify this toolpath and see if I'm happy with it. Here is my one inch. It's difficult to see. There's my one inch feeding in. I'll go back to isometric view and I'll verify the tool pass. Now we're in the verify. We can see the clamps I was referring to that I wish to miss. Okay, the parts also have socket head cap screws. I don't want to cut those holding them down. So I'm going to run the verify simulator. And if I'm happy, I'll save my work and continue on. I want to watch the clamp doesn't get cut by the tool in any of these passes. And I'll have a good look at my part. I'm happy with that. I'll close the simulator and I'll save my work.